Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to a brand new video here today and another episode of my F1 2019 career mode here today for the Chinese Grand Prix at Shanghai. First of all guys, if you have missed round two at Bahrain, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you could check it out, it'll be linked in the top right hand corner of your screen. So go see what happened in that race because I'm trying to put on a good show this season and hopefully you guys do enjoy it. But this weekend, we are here at Shanghai. You can see on the screen, no rain expected this weekend in terms of the weather forecast, which is great. And we currently have about 1,000 R&D points to our name. We're currently building up a few more points and in the meantime other teams behind us have brought some upgrades to this race Pretty much every single team to be honest with you below us and uh, McLaren and Ferrari staying where they are and crucially Red Bull gaining a, a, a chunk of ground also Toro Rosso as well improving quite a lot But overall we stay where we are. We still have a good gap to Red Bull But it's definitely gonna mean the grid's gonna be even closer this weekend and the grid's been pretty damn close in the first two races so I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be very very exciting as we now get ready for the start of qualifying There was Pierre Gasly in the Mercedes, of course, team F Sebastian Vettel, and here is my teammate Sergio Perez in the uh, racing point. And then here we have the beautiful Red Bull, of course, of George Russell. Really, really happy with how that car turned out in terms of the look of it and the modding. And uh, speaking of Red Bull, there is the sister car, the Toro Rosso, and then finally the McLaren, of course. We've been a bit of an underrated package this season. They've been the second quickest team, and they have shown great pace at times, but they have lacked in other areas. Either way, we now jump into qualifying here, and this was my first of three runs. My best run being the second one. So so we'll run on board that in a minute. But first of all, through the final corner, we're going to end our first time lap here, keeping it within the track limits as we cross the line. And we go P3, one tenth off the pace with a 27.0. So not a bad lap, uh, not a great lap. I'm not the best around here, so it's going to be difficult as we now push down to P8. This was my best lap in qualifying. So let's run on board and let's see how we get on for a full lap of the Shanghai International Circuit. At the final corner, opening up the DRS as we run up to the line and we do improve by three and a half tenths a purple final sector and we jump up to third place behind both Ferraris and a tenth and a half off the pace as we then cut onto our final run. We did get pushed down to fourth place as Russell did improve in the Red Bull, but then unfortunately we got stuck behind this Mercedes and we lost a chunk of time. I'm not sure who it was, but uh, we lost so much time through here. And in the end, you know, two tenths to find in two corners was not possible because on the last run, I nailed the final part of the lap. So I knew I wasn't going to find that time. So I just decided to back off and give up on the lap. But we now move though into the starting grid and it's Max Verstappen. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. He is back on top. The Red Bull has improved and he is P1 once again. So an old foe returns to the top as Kafiat is P2. Lewis Hamilton is in third place behind him with Sergio Perez, my teammate, up in P4. Great qualifying from him. We then move on to the second part of the grid. We've got Carlos Sainz in P5, Bottas alongside him in sixth. So a double uh, good qualifying from McLaren there on the third row. Russell seventh and then Charles Leclerc for the Haas team up in eighth place. And we then move further down, of course, to row number five. And that is where we are in P9. Sebastian. Vettel alongside us who are rounds off the top 10 for Mercedes. He managed to out-qualify his teammate Pierre Gasly and to be fair 
Vettel was two tenths slower than us, so we had it pretty comfortably in P9, uh, but the top nine was really, really close, covered by four tenths, and the Landon Norris there in P12. Then we have Alexander Albon, P13, with the Kevin Magnussen in 14th alongside him. Then we have both of the Alphas in 15th and 16th, with Raikkonen beating his teammate Nico Hulkenberg. And then finally, the final four places are filled out by, of course, Lance Stroll in the Williams ahead of Antonio Giovinazzi in the Renault, and then both of the Toro Rossos at the back of the grid, Ricardo at qualifying his teammate Roman Grosjean there. But that is your grid for the Chinese Grand Prix. We're now going to get racing and try and turn around what was actually disappointed qualifying into a decent race result. Here we are then for the start of the race here for the Chinese Grand Prix, starting from P9. In the end, we got pushed down quite a bit down the grid, but it's very competitive, very close, and it's all to play for, really, I think, around here. And the target for me really is a top five finish. So far, we've had a third place and a fourth place. We're kind of aiming for that kind of region uh, once again. But in terms of the strategy today, we are going to go for what the team recommends, which is a soft to hard tire strategy. The other possibility is a soft, medium, medium. That is a much safer strategy. We'll definitely get to the end on those quite comfortably. Um, we'll kind of judge it and see how the soft tire holds up. It's entirely down to the soft tire. If the soft tire holds on, we can you know, go for the one stopper. If not, we'll try and go aggressive and use the faster tires to try and make something happen. Fuel-wise, we're going to run one extra lap of fuel in the car. Um, not super heavy, but enough that just in case, if we have to push on the more aggressive strategy, we will have some left in the reserve. So hopefully, we can have a good race. Overcast conditions here today, no sun throughout so it's going to hopefully keep the track temperature down a little bit and keep things under control but uh, yeah without further ado let's jump into it and let's see how we get on for round three and the Chinese Grand Prix here today at Shanghai right here we go let's get ready for the start of the race as we get ready for the five red lights lights out and away we go not a bad start to be fair not bad at all as we go to turn one we are going to be able to get the inside line which is perfect for us as we go now into turn two, picking up the inside line on Sebastian Vettel, who gives us a squeeze onto the gravel there. Not exactly what we want, but we do manage to hold on. We're on the outside now, and oh my god, there's some debris coming off there. I think that's off Leclerc. I think I saw a bit of a uh, blue sponsorship. We are going to go down the inside, though, into the hairpin. Aggressive move. Three cars into one corner. Can we do that? Power down. Can we get ahead of Russell? Not quite. Russell's still there. He has got his engine turned up, but we are going to try and go around the outside, but it doesn't quite work out for us. Russell holds on to P7, but we're up to P8, so it's a good start from us. Being aggressive, getting the elbows out, making a beautiful triple overtake down to turn number five. Perez has had a shock up from P4 down to P6. He's had a very poor start in the other racing point. Let's see if we can now hang on to these guys. The target, of course, is to stay within DRS range, especially for the first two laps. This is when the AI run their engines at max power, and they're really bloody fast, so we've got to really work hard here to stay with these guys. But once DRS becomes available, things will start to go away. I also know our straight speed I think is pretty good around here. Our top speed is really, really good in the speed trap. So we may have a chance. You can see we're actually catching Russell already here. For a brief second now, I thought about it, the, the dive, but it's still early doors. We'll try and build our confidence up and then we'll maybe look for the overtake. But it's looking good at the minute. Hopefully the race pace is a bit more competitive than the qualifying pace. I mean, the, I don't think the quality pace was that bad, to be honest with you. Just, um, you know, it was a matter of tense and everyone was so, so close. As we go into turn one though, we are getting on Russell here. Russell doesn't seem that quick off the get-go. So uh, we may have a chance of getting past him here. We need to use the fact while the tires are fresh to make these overtakes. Because once they start to fade, it's going to be harder to make overtakes happen. The AI tend to drive better than me on worn tires. So we need to try and make it happen early on. My differential is set to 50. So that will hopefully help us out as well in terms of tire performance and keeping the rear tires. Okay, now we're talking. In theory now, this is when the AI start to just turn their engines down a little bit. So... We'll get a chance to make things happen now, hopefully, if the tyres can hold on. There's also a bit of a breakaway. We're just starting to drop Sebastian Vettel from behind, and uh, Vettel's well ahead of the next cars behind him. So we're hanging on here. It's kind of like an eight-car breakaway out front. At the minute, we're all just in a massive DRS train here, so nothing's really happening as it stands. But it feels like Russell's just starting to struggle to hold on to Perez here, so we may have a chance at the end of this lap if we can stick with him. The problem is AI are very good through the second sector, so I struggle to stay close by the back straight, which is a shame. My first sector is pretty good, but it's the middle sector where I struggle to hold on to these guys. So hopefully we can do that on this lap. I'm just not close enough at the minute to go for a move on Russell. To be fair, he doesn't have much of a toe from Perez. Check your MFD for a new strategy option. Confirmed. We'll, we'll say yes to that for now, but uh, we may not catch Russell on this straight, but we may have a chance on the pit straight if I can stay close through the final corner. That's not bad. 
DRS. Russell does have DRS of his own. We're approaching. Thought about it, but Russell didn't flinch. He didn't go defensive. If he's gone defensive, that would have opened up the opportunity to go for the move, but he held on, held firm. I'd love to get someone to turn five, but I can never get the acceleration that AI get, which is a shame. Right, so we have got DRS on Russell this time. He doesn't have DRS on my teammate, so he's going to be a lot more vulnerable this time. Overspeed there, catching me out into the hairpin. Going to try and turn the engine up now if I can, and uh, maybe if we can get the final corner perfect. No, never mind, Russell pits. So it's an early start from Russell, presumably an aggressive strategy. So that's going to release us into P7 as there's a battle in front now for, I believe, P3, which is allowing the two Ferraris out front to check out, which is a shame. Verstappen lost the lead to the two Ferraris, and uh, it's not been ideal, but now there seems to be an almighty battle for third place in that final podium spot. Let's see if we can try and get ourselves back in that mix. The team wants me to do a one-stop on mediums on pit on lap 9, which is very bold of them. But we could do that. I've looked at my tyre wear. It could be possible. We'll have to try and save these a little bit. But we could make that happen. All right, a few more cars are pitting, including my teammates, Sergio Bedev. Let's see what happens here now. Ferrari in the pit lane as well. Sergio is in for his stop. So we're now up to P3. We're the pit window. You'll be on the mediums. If we make this strategy work, which the team are recommending, by going onto the mediums on lap 9, it would give us a great chance. I think they are going to go for either the two-stop medium or they're going to go for one stop onto the hard. So we'd have an advantage on that tyre. It means we might struggle at the end, but let's see what the pace is like staying out. Doesn't seem too bad at the minute. But we've still got two more laps after this to go. So let's see how the tyres hold on. Okay, now the remaining cars pit. We're going to stay out here. We're going to try and go for this different strategy and try it, see what we can do. Let's look at the tyre wear. 47 left rear, that's not bad. Not great, but it's not it's not bad. We can definitely make something work with that. Looks like Hamilton's going to the hard tire. I wonder if those who pit maybe went for the two-stop, possibly. I know someone like Russell's probably definitely going for the two-stop. That's a long way to go on the hard tire. So, uh, we'll see. Last lap was pretty poor. This one is okay, although that was a bit of a mistake there. We've managed to hold on. Tires have faded a little bit towards the end, but... The good thing is, look at the minimap, I think the guys up here have been caught up in traffic due to those who start on the medium tyre, so I feel like we're not going to lose that much. I could be wrong, I mean we probably will rejoin at the back of the pack and back in like a net P8, but the difference is, we'll have the better strategy now, which is good. Okay, tyre situation bad. Consensus around the garage is they're not looking great, and I don't think you're going to get much more out of them. That's alright mate, because we're pitting anyway. I absolutely messed up the pit entry. I ran it really wide into the uh, outside there of the left-hander. But luckily, we didn't quite do a Hamilton 2007, even though there's no gravel. There go a bunch of cars. Let's see where we are. Exit. Exit now. All right, there's Lewis, net race leader. And there is a massive train of cars. So uh, that's interesting. Okay, stay clear of the white line on the exit. We'll receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross over into the track. So Perez in front. Everyone's stuck in the train of cars, so we'll be able to reconnect and get on the back of those guys very easily. And we'll have the benefit of the medium tyre, so this has worked out beautifully for us. I'm just going to try and save a bit of fuel in the RS while I can on this outlap, because we're going to be using a lot of it to make these overtakes. You can see there's so many cars trapped in here, and it includes pretty much everyone all the way up to P2. Even a Ferrari's been caught in there, so that's going to be interesting. And McLaren's actually got in front of the Ferrari, so that's even more tasty. Okay, then here we go. Looks like the Ferrari's making a move. Gasly out of the race in the Mercedes as the Ferrari does make the move. We're entering the yellow flag zone though. Caution. Caution. Look at this. We're going to get a massive amount of slipstream and overspeed here. Perez gets held up. Yellow flag zone so we can't make any moves. The track is clear. Perez runs in beautifully on the brakes. That is a great move from Perez. We're going to get the switch back here on signs. In the McLaren we get very sideways on the exit. Which isn't going to help. Into the final corner is three wide between Sainz and the Red Bulls. Another switch back from us. We've not got no, we haven't got any slipstream whatsoever. We're going to try and get on the inside here into turn one. Yes, we do. Trying to force our way through down the inside as well of that Red Bull. We get squeezed a little bit into the apex there, but I can smell a few positions gained, and I want to take these. Perez has done a great job of making progress here and getting past the traffic. That move. 
down the outside of the hairpin was brilliant. He's now trying to get past the Renault, which is causing this entire slowdown. We have to avoid the Renault under braking. It's Magnussen. We're going to try and get past if we can here. We're going to have a look on the inside here. There we go. Job done. So we're through. We'll take that. Now we're behind Perez. Of course, we've got the medium tyres on, so we'll have the benefit of those. We can use those to make light work of our teammate and hopefully pull away. They probably will get a chance to come back at us at the end of the race, but hopefully the mediums can hold on long enough. They're not the super resistant tyre around there, but it should be enough for us to hold on. Looks like Russell may have just dropped out of my DRS, though. They've lost enough time behind the Renault that he shouldn't get DRS. Now we're going to try and get past Perez. Will it happen on this straight? That's the question. We're gaining on him. We're gaining a boatload of him. On the brakes. Easy does it. Don't overcommit. It is our teammate after all. We'll hang back now to the final corner. Wait for the switch back. Now we'll get the DRS for a second time. Here we go. Job done around the outside of turn one. A little bit wide there, mid corner, but that's okay. So we're up to P11 now. Got Grosjean in front. Hamilton has just passed him. I believe it's Hamilton in the in the Ferrari. I could be wrong. Could be Kvyat. Who knows? But let's try and use these tyres now to pull away from the guys behind on the hards and open up a gap. And right, we've got to look for a move on Grosjean here. As we're now much faster than, of course, the struggling Toro Rosso on used mediums. I think we'll get the run through here. Maybe not. I thought I'd be a little bit closer. Maybe go down the inside into that left-hander. But we have to hang back for now. This is allowing Perez to keep up, which is bad news. We want to try and pull away whilst we have the fresh rubber. We'll wait to the back straight. I want to rush, but at the same time, we don't want to rush and make a stupid move. So we'll be patient with it. We'll use the fresh tyres to get it done. Here we go. Power down. We'll get a nice bit of overspeed with the DRS. That Toro also is pretty good on the straight, actually. The Honda Power unit working well, but we do make the move. And it's actually Kofi out in front of us. So Hamilton is the Ferrari out front, who leads the race here today. So Kofi out for once, isn't running away with it. Looks like he's not on for the race win, unless something happens to Lewis. And a few cars in the pit lane for good measure. As we move up to P7 now in this race. So there we go. Let's trample away. Use the fact Grosjean's holding up the cars behind to open up a gap. This lap. Right, more cars pit as Perez makes the move on Grosjean. We're going to gain a few more places now. I believe we're going to move up to P4 in this race. There we go. Net P4. Kofiat and uh, I'm not sure which McLaren it is in front. But battling for P2. Hamilton out front all by himself. So... Let's try and use these tyres to close down these guys. Tyre well looks good. We're only on like 13% at the minute on the rears. So it's looking pretty damn good at the moment. I think we'll get to the end quite comfortably, actually. Surprisingly comfortably. I expected far worse. Kofiat putting a move on Bottas here currently. Looks like he's going to get it. He's got the inside line through the final corner, which is where you want to be. They will lose a bunch of time by going side by side like that, which is also going to help us out massively. But Kofiat has got it done. So Bottas up next for P3 and final spot on the podium. Let's get him. Struggling to close up that last part of the gap now. It does look like you can tell that these cars, the McLaren and the Ferrari, are faster cars than ours. We just lack a little bit of pace because I am pulling away from Perez, but I'm not closing in on the guys in front. So it's looking like a bit of a dead heat at the minute, not really going anywhere, which is a shame. I feel like the tyres are also entering a bit of a crossover period now. So we're just starting to lose our benefit of the mediums and the hards are just starting to get into that sweet spot now. I may have a chance if Bottas drops out of the RS, but at the minute he's holding on to Kvyat's the RS, which is making it very difficult because it means the McLaren is running at Ferrari pace, which is, you know, not the case, but that's what's happening right now. So it's a little bit frustrating. Perez is just starting to get caught up now by Sainz and Verstappen, who are behind him. Looks like it may not be fourth and fifth for us here today. It could be a little bit less than that. Everything's continuing to go this way. I'm not holding on to these two anymore. Until Bottas drops out of Kvyat's the RS, we're not making anything happen. It's as simple as that. We're actually catching Hamilton, to be fair. That's, what, that's what's actually happening. We're still pulling away from Perez, gapping up to 2.5. So we've still got life in these tyres. I'm um, doing a good job of keeping the RS on target. So we've got full battery to deploy, and I'm using it all on the back straight to really maximise our top end speed. There's my tyre wet. Front left is actually the most worn tyre, 26%. That's beautiful. In 10 laps, we're more than on target to finish this race on these tyres. And to be fair, not have major problems with them either. So that's really, really good. 
Okay, Bottas is just starting to drop off now. I feel like he's close to dropping out of the RS range. If Kafiat can just push for one or two more laps, Bottas will be, unfortunately for, for him, dropped off from the back of Kafiat. And we may have a chance. My pace is still good. I've kept a lot of fuel and ERS on side. So the second it happens, which could be now to be if I'm looking at the gap, it looks pretty big. We can start to push and close in because the tires are still hanging in there. Looks like I was wrong. Bottas is actually pulling away even without the DRS and, and uh, Perez, sorry, is actually closing in on us now. So maybe the AI now picking up their pace and using their hard tires to uh, switch up the pace. So this may now suddenly turn into a bit of a defensive drive and try and keep Perez behind us for the remaining laps of the Grand Prix. So I think we've got to start looking behind us now rather than in front. The AI picking up their pace. I'm actually on for a personal best. I'm matching it at the minute and uh, we're losing time in front and behind. So the AI are now going for this. This is going to be a tricky one now. We're going to have to use up all our reserves to try and keep up with the pace here. There's still a long way to go. Five laps from across the line. So uh, Perez can still quite easily catch us. This isn't one of my best tracks. So if we can hold on to this, I'll be very happy. As qualifying pace proved, we lack a little bit of rhythm around here, so we've done a good job to get P4. Okay, mind you don't get caught out on this set of boots. We have started to notice some wear. We should be okay for a bit longer though. They look okay, 40% left front. We're on target to get to the end, so I'm not too concerned. But uh, we have to obviously manage it as best as we can. Four laps to go. To be honest with you, I'm looking at signs and Verstappen behind Perez. We may have to let Perez go by and not fight him too hard tactically because what we don't want is both cars to lose out to those two so I wouldn't complain about a P5 we'll see what Perez is like if I keep behind I will but I don't want to ruin his race or our race as a team obviously okay Perez has DRS on the back straight but he's nowhere near close enough to challenge us on this lap I think we are going to defend this it will mean we have two laps to try and keep him behind which I think I can do right so Perez right on that gearbox now but because I've saved so much DRS we should be able to run full power now to the finish. So if we can stay in front here as the rear tires start to let go, we might be okay. I've seen his straight line speed. It's very good. Here he comes. He tucks in. He pulls out. We're going to commit to this on the brakes. Try not to hit him if possible. We get the traction down even on the old tires. That's good. Through the final corner. Power down, keep it in front into turn one. We can do this. Right, we'll keep the engine turned up now for the rest of this lap and try and keep Perez at bay, which I think we can do. Right into the banking for the final time. Hamilton's going to win the race here today. And GG's to him on the win. His first win in red in a Ferrari. Onto the back straight, we've had a fantastic exit actually. Very, very nice. Here comes Perez now, though. DRS open. Will he be close enough? Yes, he will. Actually, no, I don't think he will be. I thought about it, but he never quite got close enough. So there we go. We did a good job. That's why you save all your ERS. We managed it beautifully. Use up the last bit now. Up to the line, just to confirm it. And there we go. Job done. P4. And that is a great result at the Chinese Grand Prix. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part for me. Well, what a drive that was to take the win for Ferrari today. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving, nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari do it again.
Here we have it then, the results are in. Lewis Hamilton picks up his first ever race win in a Ferrari ahead of Danny Fiat who picks up second place. Ahead of Valtteri Bottas who has a great race in the McLaren onto the podium. Really strong race from him and I couldn't match his pace towards the end. We hold on for P4 on the medium tyres and in the end that strategy worked out beautifully to get us up the grid and finish in fourth place. Ahead of our teammate Sergio Perez who is P5. Then we have Carlos Sainz in sixth place ahead of Max Verstappen. Sebastian Vettel eighth. George Russell P9 on a two-stop strategy and Nico Hulkenberg scores his first points I believe Alfa Romeo in 10th place. Missing out on the points, we have Albon, Norris, Leclerc, Giovinazzi, Stroll, Raikkonen, Grosjean, Ricardo, and Kevin Magnussen at the back with Pierre Gasly, the only retirement of the race here today in the Mercedes. We then move into the driver standings and we are in third place, 13 points behind Lewis Hamilton, so not too bad, 28 behind Danny Kafir after three races and Perez moves up to P4 with that fifth place finish and uh, Bottas moves up to P5 as well, so they both overtake Sebastian Vettel. In terms of the constructor standings, we are in second place and 27 points clear of McLaren, but 53 behind Ferrari so it's a long way to go Ferrari so far have won every single race this season so it's going to be hard to beat but we'll try our best but that is it from me here today at China guys if you enjoyed the video and the episode drop a like I'd greatly appreciate it and also subscribe if you are new for daily Formula 1 career mode MotoGP career mode and any kind of random F1 content I may post on the channel and also turn on notifications guys to not miss out on any content from me and finally check out the two videos on your screen if you have missed them but that is it from me here today at Shanghai and I'll see you guys next time for round four for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix at Baku. But until then, it's goodbye from me.